We're going to call now Professor Naira Maria Balzaretti from the University of Rio Grande do Sul. She has a graduation in physics, but by the uh, a master's in physics and doctorate in uh, physics, and all in the same University of Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, she works with the Institute of Physics. She has uh, experience in the physics area with material physics, and she acts especially in, this, in the themes, processing and analysis of m materials, uh, tools, ceramics, and nanosciences. She today is the director of the na nanoscience um, d department. You have 20 minutes to expose. I would like to thank um, exactly. I would like to thank you all of you for the invitation. This is a unique opportunity for all of us. And my subject here is to bring a little bit of reality of the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. I'm also, I'm also a physician. I don't know why there are so many uh, uh, physics here. But I'm an experimental physics, but it was good to know that theoretician, th uh, theoretical physicians, f f physics are here. The, so let's talk about education and technology. How can we do this? Uh, how can we do a salad with so many different um, um, vegetables? Let me uh, start with the subject. It's not exclusivity of myself. And I want to show you also what we do in the South. I will present you the scale because uh, with the, 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 I'm a experimental physic. If you're a theoretician, you don't need a rule or whatever. But for us, it's very important is to put down the dimensions. Where the important thing is that the scale, we get into the size of the DNA. We have been able to see things that nature has done forever, but we're having access to this reality in a manipulated um, form. So what can we do best with this non-universe? It always existed, but now we have access to it. Everything started with uh, Richard Feynman in 1959 and this yearly meetings of this physics society, in the case the American one, and uh, it's saying that there is plenty of room at the bottom. There were things at the nanoscale, they were there. We, we just had this short-sightedness to us for our challenge was to be able to see this reality, to discover its potential and to use it the best way possible in every context. There's no violation of the laws of physics in the principles of non-manipulation because of the, the models are all known. And quantic, quantic mechanic, quantum mechanics will be the background. This was established in 1925, not even a century. But it's very good for this context. What we didn't have was the experimental part, the microscope, the tools in order to explore this universe. But in theory, it did exist. So the initial milestone was in 1990. With, uh, that's how you wrote uh, IBM with atoms of xenon. To write IBM or any, any device with this. So 30 years after uh, Feynman's provision, uh, things started to happen. And this is very convenient for the new generation. We have the theoretical instrumental, we have the forums, and we have the uh, uh, experimental part. e metro for instance, has excellent equipment to study matter in that scale. So it's a very interesting moment. But like my friend said, the boat is already in the high sea. So we have to manage to steer it in the high sea. So we are not uh, the starting from scratch. So nanoscience and nanotechnology is science and technology in a nanoscale. Any research, applied or fundamental, um, or that involves the production, c c controlled of uh, nanomatter, 
Yeah, but we have to uh, take into account its social, economical, environmental, and regulation impact. What's the impact for the society and for environment in this fascinating nanometric uh, uh, universe? So what's our challenge? Well, for us here would be the training of these people. How can you train a worker, a student, that will work with nanotechnology and science. I use as an example the graphene that's connected to the Nobel uh, Prize of this year. That's only, only a film of carbon, hexagonal in nature. It's bidimensional material, has a thickness of one atom, just a a simple connection between carbon atoms. It's a nanometric atom, has the uh, thickness of one atom. In terms of science, uh, basic science, hard science, it is a very interesting material in terms of a uh, structure of matter for physics. What's the properties of this material? Because it's bidimensional. In chemistry, do, do I, can I synthesize this uh, this material, can I use it in some applications in terms of bio biology? What's the interface of this material with biological structures such as the cell? In the point of view of science, it's extremely interesting. From the point of view of applications, how is the safety? How does the material work in the in environment? What's the uh, What's the regulation to use graphene? Do we need a mask in order you know, to explore graphene? Very fashionable right now. What can we do? The processes and products and innovations using graphene. So it's in a typical material because in 10 years, you already got a, a Nobel Prize normally it takes a long time you know get this old man to receive the prize this guy is a young guy because he has great in, in uh, technological uses so it is an exception the speed at which it appears uh, it's much faster now if you compare the past and you have to take that into account uh, not obviously someone who works in nanoscience and nanotechnology it's impossible that this person has a deep education in each one of these topics we need excellent aubergines, we need excellent carrots and tomatoes to have a beautiful salad. So I believed in the training of a biologist, of a chemist, and eventually with seasoning of nanoscience and, and nanotechnology. That's my personal vision, by the way. And besides, we have to take into account the reality in Brazil, how our students that are come from the middle school how these topics are dealt with in the, at, at uh, the high school. It's, is it in the interest of the country or not? The government has been a great partner financing research. So it, it is a national strategy that has to be taken into account. It's a stimulating factor. It is a strategic area to study graphene in Brazil. Who defines that? Are there researchers with their free will, or is it the government? How can you define this? Obviously, we are not isolated. There are several boats in the same high seas. So all of this is a very complex scenery. And how do we deal with this reality? This is our greatest challenge. Within this context, I will introduce you three items that I believe are achievements in this area, in three different areas. The first one is extremely informative. That's one of the initiatives. The second one breaches the education at the graduation level. And the third one is at the undergraduate level. So the first example is the center of nanoscience and nanotechnology that was created at UFRGS by initiatives, initiative of the, uh, the teacher, the teachers there, the professors there, we have 10 units, uh, chemistry, engineering, physics, geoscience, mathematics, uh, uh, information. These are all volunteer researchers from these 10 units that interact with different topics. It's a virtual center. I'm the vice director, no longer the director. 
and it's, it is an interdisciplinary center to promote discussion with a, a physician, a, pharmac a pharmacist, a chemist to, to talk together. So it's a, a different facets of the same problem, like it is the multidisciplinarity. And what's the actions of Senano to promote this contact, to promote the development in this area? Well, the areas where we work are three of them. We, div we, div we could divide in three areas, a part of uh, materials, nanomaterials, nanoelectronic, and finally nanobiotechnology. So we have 65 researchers, uh, members of Senando. They act or they operate in one of these three areas. They, uh, they, they are, of course, they are researchers and they teach the students and they are in scientific research. See, these are the actions we have promoted, events. We have a Senano show every two years where researchers and graduate students present their work to a, a more selected um, audience, but with different types of training. We are now producing uh, the third book, the topics in nanoscience and nanotechnology. This is written by Senano members that they describe topics of their research in a didactical manner to help uh, graduation and undergraduate students. So uh, number one is printed and two and three are being printed right now. Different events. And the Ministry of Science and Technology has given us finances for f f f financial help to make a regional laboratory of nanoscience and nanotechnology in the southern part of the country. So we have managed to buy a transmission electronic microscope. We are now projecting the facilities for Senan, how the building will be, and multidisciplinary events. And so this is the Senano action. So it's mostly informative and put people together in the same room to discuss nanoscience topics. Our second achievement, the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, is the creation of the graduation program of, uh, of science of materials uh, since 1994. So we have uh, the, uh, the teachers and the students in uh, different areas. The teachers have chemistry, physics, pharmacy, etc. And below the students, the chemistry, physics, and engineering. It's not a graduation program, but it's excellent that we have the solid. We have uh, 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 physics, we have chemists uh, working together. And of course, the graduates, the second level. To give you an idea, 2009, 2010, 60% of our thesis were all in the nano area. Nano materials, I'm not sure, but we have doctors, dentists, pharmacists, they're all doing the masters and, do uh, and, and, and doctorate in this area at the graduate level. And finally, the third action is the creation of a bacharelate in physics and materials and nanotechnologies beginning in 2010, where in the second semester of this course, so this is a graduation or undergraduate is a physics course we want to have a good professional but this physics should have a good uh, concept of a nanoscience and nanotechnology a nanometric scale and the curriculum is one of physics with three uh, disciplines low dimensionality physical fabrication of nanostructures one and two these three different disciplines will differentiate this uh, this course of physics from the others we have. So it's a physics course with the actions of uh, manipulation of uh, matter in a nanometric scale. So I would like to call your attention upon is, is that I have a few problems I have here. We are the teachers our our education is disciplinary now we have this great challenge of uh, training an entire generation with multidisciplinary daddy 
uh, interdisciplinarity. I'm going to teach uh, graduation or undergraduate uh, students with the broad spectrum that I have that uh, non-science uh, demands. But I do not have the necessary training for this. We cannot bring the ship to the dry dock to redo it. We're already um, in progress and we need to go forward. So this is the greatest challenge. And from the point of view of society, because we are training physics and chemists, uh, for academia there's very little uh, outlet for them in society so we do the training of these people for ourselves at least in Rio Grande do Sul a good part of our physics they remain in academia uh, so what's this, the uh, way out for society here I can have this very good uh, professional very well trained but it will have to go to places like INPI the ministry uh, in Metro to give the expected impact of society take into account the environment etc for, so for us for me it's a great challenge we are partners it's not a very easy task but we still continue to be a professor a tutor i know it's a little bit too much but like you said the boat is still there so the objective is to have an excellent salad with excellent tomatoes etc etc thank you very much